During the fall season, while you enjoy the changing colors of the leaves and the cool, sunny autumn days, don't forget to spend time with the Creator who has blessed us with the changes of the seasons. Read your King James Bible, and you can study along with us by visiting bbfohio.com and by listening to Bible Believers Fellowship each Saturday at noon and every Sunday at 9.30 p.m. on 91.5 Freedom FM. Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of bbfohio.com. This is a two-part message from our local church series titled Sola Scriptura. What sets Bible believers apart from other professing Christians is our allegiance to the Holy Bible over any other allegiance. This message will emphasize the proper and biblical attitude that the Bible believer ought to have towards God's Word. So let's begin part one of Sola Amen. Scriptura, phrase, Sola the authority Scriptura of Scripture made, alone. Uh, well known, famous during the Reformation period. Sadly, because Christians don't know cri real Christian history, they're given the seminary version. They don't realize that from the time of the apostles up until today, there have always been remnants of Christians all over the world who have held to the Bible as their authority. The Reformation was when a bunch of Catholics decided that they wanted to join that movement. So I want you to understand the Reformation for what it is. It is not the revival of biblical Christianity as it's falsely taught. It is the revival of a bunch of Catholics. Martin Luther was a Catholic. If you go look at John Wycliffe, you find out he's a Catholic. Erasmus, who gave us our received text, was a Catholic. It was the revival of Christianity among Catholics. They joined people who were called things like Anabaptists, Baptists, and the rest in believing this. This is what separated the men from the boys back then. You believe the Bible is your sole authority and if you believe that, then you believe the true gospel. If you reject that, you reject the true gospel. That's just the way it works. People ask these questions. Where does the Bible teach that it alone is our authority? Most of the time that's a question that a Roman Catholic or a Greek Orthodox, Eastern Orthodox, someone like that is going to ask you. Because they are taught that the Bible is not the authority. That they can go by church tradition and all that sort of thing. And we're going to see that the Bible claims to be the infallible Word of God and the Bible rejects any outside source as an equal authority, including church tradition. Amen. You may wonder why you have friends and family who don't believe like you. There are two reasons. Number one, they reject the Bible as their authority. Number two, they don't rightly divide the Bible. Those are the two reasons. There are a lot of saved people who don't rightly divide. And that's why they differ with you even though they're saved. There are a lot of unsaved people who reject the gospel that you and I believe because they reject the authority of Scripture. And we'll talk more about that. Turn to your Bible to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. It's a memory verse for Bible believers. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Second Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. We're going to see in this text that uh, the Bible claims that Scripture is given by inspiration of God. And that's a very important phrase to understand. It doesn't mean that insp inspiration like, you know, someone who's inspired to write a poem and it sounds nice. This is something beyond that. It's the inspiration of God. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 3. Read verse 16 with me. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Now it tells you why in the next verse, and that is that the man of God may be perfect, throughly, not thoroughly, throughly furnished unto all good works. If your Bible says thoroughly, you need to get a new Bible. It's been tampered with. There is a difference between thorough and through. If you have a uh, virus that is uh, through your body, that's different than thoroughly having a virus. Because you can have a virus thoroughly, but it not be through your whole body. There's a difference. And this is so that from top to bottom in everything you do, you can be throughly furnished unto good, all good works. Now, it says all Scripture, meaning there's a limit, and there are only certain things that are considered Scripture, 
and that's for another study, but I'm going to give you the introduction to that, is that Jesus Christ himself referred to the writings of Moses and the uh, prophets and the writings, which is a reference to the Psalms and the Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, and they throw Job in there as well. The whole Old Testament that you have in your King James Bible and Jesus himself is the source for Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And Luke, who wrote Luke, also gave us the book of Acts in which it bears the uh, fingerprints of divine inspiration. But Jesus himself prophesied, we're going to see in a moment, but I'm going to tell you again to sum this up. Jesus prophesied when the Holy Spirit came, He would lead you into all truth, and that is a reference to the epistles that we have, and so that's all Scripture. Those books used by some churches called the Apocrypha, they are not Scripture. They are not written by biblical authors. They contain occultism, error, and all sorts of other uh, nonsense. And a lot of the so-called lost books of the Bible were written by fakes who pretended to be authors they weren't. Like the book of Enoch was not written by Enoch, for example. And then you have the Acts of Pontius Pilate wasn't written by Pontius Pilate. Then you have the Epistle of Barnabas, which wasn't written by Barnabas. And all these others, the Gospel according to Timothy, which Timothy didn't write it. And, the, and the, no one argues that. But they still want to add it to the Bible. So we know what Scripture is. And all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. That means it's God-breathed. The uh, Greek text that the King James comes from says it's theonoustos, which is God. Noustos is like pneumonia, pneumatic drill, air. God-breathed. God actually breathed these words out. When the Bible talks about inspiration, it's talking about the breath of God. When you talk about anything else being inspired, you just mean they're really motivated. <laughs> That's different. Man-made inspiration is not what this is comparable to. And so, Scripture is given by inspiration. Now, just think about that. Something given by a sinless, infallible God would be what? Now anybody who rejects the infallibility of Scripture has to be rejecting the Scripture itself that says it's given by inspiration of God. So that's why we know what Scripture is and we know it's infallible because it's given to us by an infallible God. Nothing else on the planet qualifies, folks. Amen. Nothing else. That's unless you can prove that man-made writings are infallible then the matter is already settled sola scriptura. That's it. We really don't have to go much any further. <laughs> a Bible believer could stop here and go eat more pizza. But please don't because i got a few more things I want to share. <laughs> Only God's words are without error and capable of even being our authority. Folks, if you ask me my opinion, I'll give you an opinion. But I'm a, I'm a fallible human being. I got news for you. There was only one who was not fallible. And that is Jesus Christ. Amen. And He points you to this book. Amen. All other men, including every leader of every religion, including the Pope or the prophet of the Mormon church or the head of the watchtower or Buddha or Confucius or Muhammad or wherever you want to point, they're sinners they're fallible. They are not in authority. Amen. Their opinion is just like noses. Everybody's got one. <laughs> Amen? Right. Submitting to anything else other than that book you have on your lap is nothing but insanity. And by the way, don't tell me about the Hebrew and Greek. You have never met anybody who knows it well enough to tell you what it actually means. That's right. Amen. I'll say that again. You have never met anybody who knows Hebrew and Greek well enough to tell you what it means. Every preacher, and I hope every preacher in the county, hears this message at some point very soon. Because every one of them who stand up here and pretend to tell you what the Hebrew and Greek means is a fraud. They are getting their information from lexicons. They don't know the Greek and Hebrew language. They are trusting lexicons. Lexicons contradict each other. It's according to what lexicon you're reading. You're reading Strong's, you're going to Young's, you're going over to, uh, I can't remember all the names, of the Cruden's, wherever you want to turn. You're trusting that person. That person's fallible. Amen. 
Amen. And I want to tell you something else. Just write this down somewhere. Those lexicons have been edited over and over and over. They, you think they're right now? They haven't been the previous 25 publications. And they won't be now because they're coming out with another one next year or two that will change that. Don't trust lexicons. Trust that book that you have right there in your hand. Amen. You can't go wrong with that. Now the fact is, all efforts to add to Scripture are satanic. Amen. Yep. That includes when you do it. Amen. 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 That includes you ever hear me add to Scripture? I'm under the control of the devil at that moment. Amen. Amen. I, I, any human being, when they add to the Word of God, they're allowing Satan to use them. And you hear people do it all the time. Yeah. Amen. I'm not saying they're all lost going to hell. I didn't say that. Folks, if you don't think that you are open to being used of the devil, you need to wake up. Amen. All you have to do is let down your guard and let that carnal flesh take over and you'll be just like all these lying preachers who stand up there and tell you your King James Bible would be better rendered such. That man is speaking the lies of the devil at that moment. Amen. I don't care how good he is. I don't care if he baptized your entire family, married him and buried him. He's still at that moment being used of Satan. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I want to show you this. You don't want to turn there. Genesis 3 shows us how Satan does it. In Genesis 3.1, it said, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, what's he say? Hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? The first thing he does is make you question whether or not what you're reading. Is there really a hell? Is Jesus Christ really the only way? Does a woman really have to submit to her husband? Does a husband have to love his wife enough to die for her? Amen, amen, amen. amen. First thing happens, you start to question. Next thing, contradict. Verse 4, Genesis 3, it says, And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Added a three-letter word and changed the entire thing completely on his head. He questioned the Word of God and then he contradicted it. Every new version on the market does that. Your NIV, your New American Standard, your Living Bible, and if that weren't bad enough, nine out of ten preachers are doing it today. Yeah. It's tough. Amos said, you know what, this is prophecy fulfilled, folks. Don't get discouraged. What you're seeing today is prophecy fulfilled. Amos, I believe it's Amos 8.11. Yeah. Amos said that in the end times there would be a famine of the, listen, hearing of the Word of God. The Word of God's here, folks. You've got millions of King James Bibles. You've got millions of Bibles in all these other languages that are exact as the King James all over the place, but you're not hearing it because people are using the new versions and the preachers are correcting the book. Yeah. And we're living in the fulfillment of that prophecy in Amos 8.11, a famine of the hearing of the Word of God. And the last thing they do is revise it. Genesis 3.5, he says, For God doth know. A better rendering would be. A better translation would be. A more literal rendering would be. What the Greek actually means is thus. The best manuscripts, the best manuscripts say such and such. I'm a buffoon. <laughs> now turn to Proverbs 30, and I want to show you something. Proverbs... We're only going to bounce back and forth a couple times and then we're going to go in order. I try to keep your Bible in order for you, make it easy to find. But Proverbs chapter 30, and we're going to read verse 6. And we are told not to add to God's words. Amen. Proverbs chapter 30, if you've got a highlighter ink pen or something, this is one you want to mark and, and memorize. Verse 6, read it with me. And that add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Whoa! God says if you add to his words, you are a liar. You know when you're going to be found a liar? If not in this life, at the judgment. When you stand before God. Those who add traditions of men to God's word are crooked liars. I just believe in, in, in saying it like it is. Tell it like it is, folks. 
I've always appreciated honest people. I've always appreciated a straight shooter. Someone will walk up to me and say, dude, your pants are unzipped. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Greg, you got something hanging off your nose there. Oh. <laughs> Amen. I like that kind of person. Or I, I like the kind of person to come up to you and say, you know what? I don't like the way you look. <laughs> I just hope he doesn't threaten me. You know, I don't want my head knocked off. I like people who are honest like that. Or I just don't like the way, you know, and we can talk about it. But if, if, they, if they're not honest and they don't tell me these things, what am I supposed to do? I'm not a mind reader. The only way I can know what's going on is if people tell me. A straight shooter. God is a straight shooter. Amen. God says that if you add to His words, you're a crooked liar. Now, we're going to go a little bit in order. So turn a few pages over to Matthew 24. Matthew 24. And verse 35. And Jesus is going to point us to His words. And I want to tell you, He never points us to the words of men or the traditions of men. Never. Matthew 24. What was that? 2435. Read that with me. Go ahead. We can't read. Boy. Amen. Y'all need to get hooked on phonics. Yes. Now you know why you need a pastor. Someone to lead. Heaven and earth. You know why it's going to pass away? Because there's coming a new heaven and a new earth. But His words will not pass away. Are you getting the trend? God puts His words above anything man has ever come up with. Amen. You cannot say that church traditions that speak the, the words of some prophet or some leader are equal to Scripture because Scripture itself and Jesus Christ Himself says no. My words are up here. Your words are down here. Matt, uh, turn over a few more pages. Uh, Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7, verse 13. Now, we studied this when we went through Mark, and we saw this Corbin thing. It is basically a tax type of write-off sort of thing that they were doing and they were ripping their parents off and, uh, and making the Word of God a joke. And that's what Jesus is telling them here in verse 13. When he says, uh, in verse 12, He's saying, You suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother. And then Jesus, look what He, he says, summing it up in verse 13. Read that. Making the Word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many such thing, like things do ye. Many! They were adding all kinds of crazy stuff that was making God's Word of none effect. Why? Because, folks, you need to understand something. God is not a dictator. God gives you choice. And even His Word will not work unless you receive it. And if you block His Word by putting something else in its place, then it makes His Word of none effect in you and in your church and in your family and in your nation. When you block God's Word with man's Word, you destroy the work of God in His Word. Now how can tradition and the Word of God be equals as people are teaching when Jesus right here says tradition is the enemy of God's Word? Amen. Tradition will destroy it. Any attempt to make the Word of God of a modern prophet, pope, magazine like the Watchtower, visions, dreams, your church, etc. You could add grandma, grandpa, uncle, aunt, mom, and dad, my own opinion, whatever. Equal to God's words is the practice of a false anti-biblical cult. Amen. 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 It doesn't matter what name's over the top of it. Turn over one chapter to Mark 8. 
Mark 8, 38. And this is, this is deep here. The, the great white throne is what is being talked about. And it's a judgment of the damned. And it will be about the rejection of God's words. Uh, Mark 8, read verse 38. Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Listen folks, most people who reject the Bible do so because of pride. The opposite of pride is shame. When you reject God's Word out of pride, that is you being ashamed of His words. You reject the idea of creation. It had to be a big bang and in an in a, in a evolution. And folks, I hope you don't believe that nonsense. That is the dumbest thing. I, the more I study evolution and the, the idea of a muddy goop getting struck by lightning and producing DNA, do you know what DNA is? I mean, if you study it, you've got to say, what? You've got to be kidding me. I mean, seriously. Don't. You, I can't believe this society is that stupid. We are teaching our children that. We exist today with billions of DNA molecules that started in muddy soup struck by lightning. Come on. Listen, folks. You, you replace God's Word, you go insane. Yeah. Evolutionary theory, evolutionary cosmology, all that is proof of it. Proof positive. It's crazy.
Quickly. 